I said, how are you doing? Well, I'm better than that. Evidently, I must be better than y'all this morning. So, I don't know, I think I broke it again. So, Audrey, could you come help me? I don't know what you did to fix it, but I think I broke it. I am excited this morning, and I'll tell you why. A couple of things that I learned in my um, engagement with this industry is that one of the things is super powerful, story sell, facts tell, right? So even if you don't have a clue about all of the details that Dr. Stan went over or how the, you know, what the difference between a token and a coin and a quarter are, you have no clue. If you simply take notes on the stories that are happening in the front of the room. You know, I was exposed to the Hope Token by Dr. Stan. And he called me and I was like, I'm busy, I'm busy, it's tax season. You guys know that this has been the most ridiculous tax season ever. Like, every other day the IRS is changing the laws, the rules are shifting, documentation is changing, we want you to do this, no, we changed our mind, do that. Like, I mean, we, it's so bad that it's not over. It's June, y'all, and I think it's like nine million tax preparers have not gotten their stuff, their either refunds, they haven't gotten, I see hands in the back, people are saying, we, we're not even finished yet, and it's about time to start over again. And I, as a tax professional, register, I can't even call and get information on my own client's stuff. When I call, they're like, well, what does the system say? It says process, okay, well, it's processing. Are you talking to me? Like, you need to give me a stimulus for putting up with you this year, right? But they're not doing that. They're just saying, wait on it. Well, tell Shanae they end up to wait on it, because they, you know, they're calling my office all day long. But anyway, so this has been the most ridiculous tax season. Taxes are shifting and changing. Things are ridiculous out there. Um, and, and we don't have any idea when it's all going to be fixed or rectified. However, I not fully understanding all of that with the hope token. This is my this is how I'm pulling it all together. Even if you don't understand it, if you understand the stories, if you can just tell the stories, then you can actually get people involved. So I'm super busy. I'm dealing with all this drama over here. Dr. is trying to talk to me about hope, dope, some kind of token. I have no clue what he's saying. But because he's telling me the story of how he was able to purchase this educational package and create some additional income, I'm like, all right, just how much? Just where do I put it? How do I do it? Just tell me what to do. I'll figure it out later. And that's what I did. So I, I purchased my educational package, and things started to slow down a little bit. He's like, have you been in your back office? I said, am I what? What, what are you talking about? How do I do that? <laughs> where is it? He's like, you know the little fox? What fox? What are you talking about? Meta Max, I mean, you downloaded it on your phone. I said, I gotta figure out what computer I even put it on. I have no idea. Like, it was that bad, 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 serious. But when I went on and realized, he shorted me, he said that my 500 turned to 3,200. It was actually like 3,700 tokens or whatever. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, you're telling me my $500 educational package has a value of over $3,600 at this point. What else do I need to do? <laughs> Help me understand. Because now I'm thinking this kind of makes cents and dollars, dollars and cents. So show me how I can explain this to people. And he told me this thing, and I was like, okay, that's cute. You know what worked for me, though? Is I called a friend of mine and said, listen, I have no idea what happened. All I know is my 500 babies turned into 3,600 babies, and you need to do the same thing I did. How do I do it? I don't know. Can you call Dr. Stan? He'll tell you. And literally, that's what I've done. And then, this morning, I got on the phone while I was sitting back here. I emailed a friend who called me immediately. That's why I stepped away. I said, I'm sitting behind these guys right here who made hundreds of millions of dollars in the industry. I said, I don't even know what we're all doing. They're gonna tell us about it later. I just need you to um, sell me like $2,500 so that when I put mine in, I can put yours in too. And they're like, do you know what it's gonna do? I said, I don't know, but I know what they've done in the past. And they made a lot of money, especially Dave. Like everything Dave puts his hands to, it turns to gold, platinum even. So I just need you on the front row with me. And they're like, okay, so we're ready. Whatever it is, we're ready, okay? But that is the stories that sell. They have no idea of facts. I have no idea of facts. I don't know. So get accustomed to telling people their the stories. That's what they care about. We don't tell people bedtime facts. We'll tell our kids bedtime facts.
facts, right? We tell them the stories. Facts only sell, I mean, uh, facts only tell, stories sell, okay? That's why I'm excited about the stories. I care about the facts. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I am Dr. Katrina Curtis, and I'm here to talk to you about some tax. Who is on the call that I um, did the training on taxes? Woo! Okay. Woo! Awesome. Did you get anything you were able to use? All right, I'm only asking the question because I want to gauge whether I need to go through some of the foundational information because I do have a limited amount of time today. So as I was thinking about it, I said, you know, what would people really, really kind of want to hear about in a short period of time? Um, we do have some training classes. We do have some coaching that if you're interested, I can actually get you keyed in on. Um, if you want to just write down this website, um, go to easytaxtalk.com. You can actually schedule some time with me, a 15-minute discovery call, or if you need some help with your taxes or tax situation, you can actually reach me that way. That's the easiest thing to do is get on my calendar. Um, we do offer a three-year look back, understand, uh, has shared or shared on the call that we've done that and actually been able to find money for people. We don't find anything fine, but if we do find something uh, like we did for my dad, my dad's actually a pastor, retired. He was um, paying twelve to $15,000 of taxes every year as a retired business owner, and we were able to go in, review his taxes, and I think his checks were $8,000, $5,000, and $12,000 that we were able to get him back. Wow. Um, as we amended his last three years taxes. It was so funny because he called me. He's like, I mean, is this a scam? <laughs> is this real money? I said, nah, dad, put it in my account. The positive, positive check in my account, you're right, it's not real money. But of course, it was real. And it's not that tax pre preparers don't understand, don't, are purposely making mistakes. It's just that if you've not been trained to do something or and look at it a certain kind of way, a lot of times you don't even know what you don't know. And it's, it's kind of like if you had a heart problem. Would you go to a podiatrist? Mm -mm. Would you? No. Are y'all gonna talk to me today? Or should I get no. used to the fact that I'm gonna be talking to myself for the next 20 minutes? I just need to know how to handle this. Okay, I can prepare myself and can handle it. So if you're not gonna go to a podiatrist for your heart problem, why are you going to a, a general tax preparer for your business tax Ooh. situation? It makes no sense. Consequently, it will cost you dollars. You hear what I'm saying? So they miss a lot. The tax code is the size of 14 Bibles. Nine million words. Who's gonna read all nine million? I'm not. I'm only concentrating on the areas that deal with what I need, which is home-based businesses, small businesses, and the tax code related to those areas. Just like the real estate person is well, I do pay attention to real estate because I do a lot of real estate, but if someone is only dealing with W-2 people, they're only concerned about those areas. So you need to find someone who specializes in whatever area it is that you're challenged in or is willing to do the research to make sure that you are taking full advantage of the tax laws. What makes this situation so unique is I got involved in the tax industry pretty much on a fluke. I am a serial... Um, a systematic serial entrepreneur. Meaning that anytime I have found a problem that irritated me, you know, big enough, I get the answer and then I start a business to solve the same problem for other people. I found myself in a situation, my, um, one of my network marketing comes like I started in. I went out and had a lot of success like right out the back. And then, you know, three years, my friends and I were making way over six figures, tons of money traveling around the country, helping other people do the same thing. So the four of us had started, you know, going from, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars to two, fifty, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. And nobody had a conversation with us about what we should do with our taxes. So when tax time was coming, we're just filing taxes using, we all use the same preparer, not professional. We were using the same tax preparer and we all got audited, all four of us. So we're looking at each other like, okay, let's go back to this guy and you know get some help. He was gone. It was off season, nobody could find him. And even when I finally located him, he was like, hey, that's your problem, right? So then you go looking for maybe a CPA or somebody else who'll help you through the audit situation. They're like, we're not touching that. We didn't do it. We don't want anything to do with it. So my friends, they were, the other three guys, they were all men. So they just went in. I'm not that type. Ladies, you know, we're going we're gonna to pick at it some more. We're going to figure this thing out. 
So I started reading the books, I started doing research because I wasn't trying to defraud the government. I was doing what I thought I was supposed to do. So I had back up for the numbers that I had given to this man. So I went through the whole process, figured out what I had to present, what was deductible, what it wasn't. A year later, it took a full year, 13 binders, I rolled into this auditor situation. I had the big roller board suitcase walking on the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, going up to this auditor's office. I walked in, she's like, what is that? I was like, think you asked me to prove my expenses. She said, but all of that? So they don't expect you to show up and be able to prove what you put on your return. First thing, they don't expect that, but I had it. She looked at my, she looked at my binder, she said, well, we're gonna go through these receipts and you better not even have tried to deduct a candy bar. I said, I didn't, why would I do that? It's not deductible. <laughs> Went through it all. Not only did I not owe them the $61,000 they said that I owed them in back taxes, they owed me $1,100 when we got there. <laughs> you know, some people would say, was it worth it for that year? I said 61 grand, right? That's somebody's salary, okay? And you would have thought they'd have left me alone. They didn't. They came back the next year again, this time for $34,000. But by this time, I had figured it out. I know how to keep my records now. I know what I need to do. And it all came down to one piece of paper. Say one piece of paper. One piece of paper. One piece of paper. They said I owe $34,000. I proved every expense. I came down to a $15,000 letter from my church saying that I had actually given fifteen grand um, as a gift that year. And they were saying I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford to give $15,000 to the church. They said, do you live with somebody who pays all your bills? I mean, how could you do that? And I said, no, I don't live with anybody. Well, we can't figure out how you can afford it. I said, it's amazing how the Lord provides. <laughs> so the whole idea being simply this, if you're not trying to defraud the government, there is no reason to be afraid of the IRS. Right, Congress put these laws in place to protect us as business owners to give us all of these incentives, these extra deductions. All you have to do is either know them for yourself or work with someone who does so that you can benefit from these laws. So don't be afraid of the audit. Now, why don't people take these deductions if they're out there, if they're so blatantly available? Three reasons, ready? Fear, fear, and more fear. For some reason, they have gotten us so afraid of the IRS that we won't do what's best for our families. Don't do that. These things are available to us. You can pick up a book, you can pick up my book, you can go on YouTube and understand clearly. Use some of what's available to you out there. Um, to get the information and just make sure you're keeping good records. So I started to think about it just because of the sake of time um, <laughs> of what kinds of the, the um, what kind of things were they looking at? I'm just going to go through some because I'm not going to be able to do all this today. But I want to share with you just some of the things that are deductible. So what do you think? Was this trip here deductible? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? yeah. yeah. Yes. Really? All of it? No. No? The amount that you're actually in class during that time frame that you document, if you spend other time doing things personal, that is not deductible. And your travel is deductible to the point of whatever gas you can deduct on the way. Really? How many say that part of the trip is deductible by show of hands? Okay, who says all of the trip is deductible by show of hands? Okay, so you're you're, um, you're both right. So there's a doctrine of primary purpose. The doctrine of primary purpose. Okay, the doctrine of primary purpose simply says, why did you come here? What was your primary reason for coming to Four Mills, South Carolina? Business. You came here for the Hope Token event. So as long as you're doing hope token business every single day that you're here, mm -hmm. then that day is deductible. That's right. Right. If you don't do any hope token business on a day, 
it's not deductible unless it's the weekend. So if you're here on Friday for Hope Token Business, and you have no Hope Token Business on Saturday and Sunday, but you have Hope Token Business on Monday, then now the weekend is deductible also. Yep. So do you see how somebody can get confused? Yeah. We're part of it, but not all of it, unless this, but unless that, unless of course, you know. So the way that you mitigate that is you can do this. If you're at home and you know you're coming to Fort Mill and you want to stay into next week, let's say you want to stay until next Friday because you've got some friends in Charlotte, well, you call or you send an email and you make an appointment to see somebody on Tuesday, someone on Wednesday, someone on Thursday, and someone on Friday to talk about home token business. You send them an email and you say, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you on such and such a day at such and such a time about the home token. Whether or not the appointment happens, once it's done, you send them an email to say thank you because I had the time, it was great meeting you, sorry I missed you, whatever happened. Now that day becomes deductible. If you don't have an appointment on that day scheduled before you leave home, that day is not deductible. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Questions? Wow. Mm -hmm. So, is your dry cleaning deductible? Yes. Is it? Yes. Or is it not? What do you mean if it's business related? So I can take this, when I go home, I can take this suit and dry clean it at home? And it's business, and it's deductible? No, no. Take it to the dry cleaner down here. Say it again. I own this garment. How many say that when I go home, I can have this suit dry cleaned at home and it's deductible? No. How many say absolutely not? How many say, I don't know, why are you asking me? You're the tax lady. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, if I go home and I have this suit dry cleaned, it is not deductible. Because it doesn't have a logo for my business on it. If it had my business logo on it, I can clean it anywhere and it's tax deductible. So the way that I would make cleaning this suit deductible would be if I had it dry cleaned here while I'm in huh. South Carolina or on site. That's good. Without the logo. Without the logo. It doesn't even matter. Okay. And it's definitely right. Where, you're going. where you're going for business. Have it dry cleaned where you're going for business and now it's deductible. Do your laundry. So pack up all your dirty clothes <laughs> and take it with you for TSA, right? So then it becomes deductible. But these are all things that you just want to kind of have in your mind when you're talking about being able to transform some of your personal expenses into business expenses. Because remember, it's not what you make. It's what you keep that counts. Because what's the point of making $1,000 if you end up giving $1,000 back to Uncle Sam? Do you realize that you can, I, I, I always hesitate when I say this, because there were many, many years that I earned well over six figures and paid little to no taxes. Because I took advantage of the second of the two tax systems that are available. The first one is available for what? Employees. Employees, right? A lot of times people will say, okay, there's two tax systems, one that make you rich and one that makes you poor. No, one that will make you poorer, <laughs> right? And that's the one for employees. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that having a job is dishonorable. What's dishonorable is not taking care of your family or paying your bills. So, you gotta have a job. You have to be able to have some kind of an income whether it's W-2 or other, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you manage it, whatever it is. But when you are paid W-2, what happens to your tax when you get your check? It's short. You make $1,000, then you might, at the end of that week, for that $1,000 period, you might get a check for 600. What happened to the other 400? Feds, federal, state, some guy named FICA. Those, you know, <laughs> your money is already gone before you ever get it. However, that same $1,000, <coughs> On the other system, which is the business owner system, you get the $1,000. Now you can pay your bills first, 
the dry cleaning while you're home state, your vacation expenses, some of your medical bills. You can even get little Johnny's car tax-free money. There are ways. You can pay for little Johnny's tuition with tax-free money. You can buy little Johnny's lunches and cars and school with tax-free money. If you know what you're doing. We do need to talk. That's the whole point of me being here. Like seriously, it's what you keep that counts. There's a reason the rich get richer. Is there not, David? <laughs> there's a rich, there's a reason. So that same thousand dollars in the business system, you take the thousand, you pay your bills, let's say you have six hundred dollars worth of bills, now you're only taxed on the four hundred that's left, instead of having the tax on the same thousand dollars, the whole thousand dollars. So we've got to make sure we're playing on the right playing field. So it's not just about leveling the playing field, it's about being on the right playing field. So if you don't own a home-based business, if you've not you know, made it your business to consistently work in that home-based business, you want to start to do that as well. All right, so um, let's talk about little Johnny for a moment. Transforming personal expenses into home-based business deductions is what we're talking about. So hiring your children is one of those ways. So, you know, it's so funny when I hear people say, oh, you know, I give little Susie an allowance. Did anybody else get an allowance when they were growing up? I didn't get an allowance. My mom said, I allow you to live in my house. I allow you to eat my food. I allow you to wear my clothes. That's about the only allowance you're gonna get around here. Anything else you're gonna earn, right? So stop giving your children allowances. Instead, hire them. Hire them. You can hire your children. Now, there are some super strict guidelines to hiring your kids um, that you want to follow. This is why you know these are things you don't want to do on your own by yourself. Because if you don't, if you miss a step, it could cost you. <laughs> it really could cost you. The IRS will disallow the deduction. And let me tell you why that's significant. Because you can hire your children and pay them up to the standard deduction for single people. Meaning, the first $12,800 or so that you pay those children is tax-free to your business. So if you made $24,000 in business this year, 12,000 of it right now can go into Little Johnny's savings account or checking account. You use that money specifically to pay for Lil Johnny's expenses. That's twelve thousand dollars of free or tax-free money. Wow. Yeah. Twelve thousand dollars of money. Now, what do you do with that money once it gets in his account? You have to use it for his expenses. But how do you do that? Well, you take that money out and you pay for his school fees, his school clothes, his school lunches. Children are expensive. Yeah. You spend way more than twelve thousand dollars a year, pretty much on your children, right? But what you got to know in that instance is you need to have hired Johnny. There should be an employee agreement. Like, you want to hire him just like you would hire anybody off the street. Now, you don't have to withhold Medicare or um, FICA or state or federal taxes. You don't have to withhold any of that like you would do anyone else. But you still want to file, give them a W-2, and you still want to make sure that you file the 941s with the IRS so they know that you're doing it and they, they know that you know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you've got to track there. You have to have record keeping, make sure that the work is age appropriate, and you have to keep track of what they're doing on a week to week regular basis. The number one rule to being successful in business financially is simply, is, is very, is very simple, but everybody does this and it drives me crazy because they always end up in my office wanting me to fix it. <laughs> they commingle their funds. You commingle funds. You cannot put your business money and your personal money in the same place. You cannot do that and think the IRS won't figure it out and decide you're not a real business and just alleviate all your deductions when they, when they, when they ask you about it, because they will. So I have a client so successful in insurance, makes about $300,000 a year. He's like 30 years old, doing very well. And he sends me, I guess he's a new client, so he sent me all his stuff, and he's like, I'm, I'm smart, right? I'm doing this thing, I'm writing off all my money every year. I said, those are not legal deductions, though. 
You go to the grocery store, you swipe your business card to pay for groceries. What, what are you doing? Are you feeding your office every day? Do you provide lunch for your and breakfast on your What are you doing? He's like, well, some of it is, but I mean, it's, it's all right off a little, right? No. Well, what are you buying at TJ Maxx? Well, clothes. I said, do they have your office logo on them? No, then it's not deductible. So you think you're so smart because you're writing off three hundred thousand dollars a year. The I, how often do you think they're going to allow you to do that? That's not. It's not good. It's not right. It's only a matter of time before you get caught out there, and you're going to be looking at me like, "Fix it." There's no fix. You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I won't do it like that. So you've got to make sure that what you're doing are actual legal deductions. There's enough of them out there that you don't have to fudge anything. You really don't. Like the, one of your biggest deductions, you probably have the key to in your pocket of your purse. Your car. Mm -hmm. How many of you drove here? How many of you tracked your mileage here? <coughs> mm. How many of you have a car that you use solely for business? Okay, that's the only case or instance in which you didn't need to track your mileage. If your car that you drove here is not solely used for business, then you need to be keeping track of your mileage. Now, how do you mitigate that? Okay, here's a clue. Get a beater. You know what a beater is? A hoopty. Get another car. <laughs> so that you can say, when you answer the question, do you have another car on your tax return, that you can say, yeah, I have another car, so this one is solely for business. Because you can't have one car and say that one car is solely for business because you have personal, right. right? So you have a beater sitting in the driveway to say, yeah, this car would be here, and it's always going to be your nicer car. That's 100% for business, so now you can write off every expense related to that vehicle. So again, I'm actually kind of like, I have like two minutes left. Um, pretty much out of time, so I'm not going to be able to go through a whole lot of this. The whole idea was just to let you know that being in business gives you the ability to save so much money. As I said, I think maybe three years ago, four years ago was the first year that I literally looked at it and had to like do some significant shifting. Like I had to buy some more stuff. I had to I had to buy more property in order to shelter more cash because if I'm going to spend money, it's not going to be on taxes. It's going to be on stuff that's going to benefit my family long term. Got, you get what I'm saying? So you need to find a tax professional who's willing to do the research, who's going to help you shelter your money, who's going to protect you from the tax person that really just wants to siphon your money to the government, especially in light of all this quote, quote, free money that's flowing. Do you really think that all this stimulus money comes without a cost to us? No. All this stimulus money, all these child um, tax credits, all this extra stuff that's given, being given away, you do realize that there's coming, a, a tax hike is coming, yeah. right? And yeah. you do realize that the tax thing is, you got to keep an eye on it because we as business owners are about to take a hit um, on what's available to us from a tax standpoint. So pay attention. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. I think I have time for, oh, I'm at 28 minutes. Do I have time for two questions? No? One and a half. One and a half questions. Anybody have a one, one and a half? Anybody have a half a question? Yes. It's true. What she said was, when you look for a tax preparer, make sure that you have one that understands network marketing. I literally just this week got a call from a guy in Illinois who's a network marketer. Um, their taxes were done by somebody in Illinois, and they had a $7,800 tax bill as a result. When I did their taxes, they got a $3,000 refund. I had to upend them because the person that did their taxes did not understand network marketing. So network marketing, direct sales, that's, that is a specialty in and of itself. And I'm not going to take another question. I'm going to say this about crypto because it affects everybody. Did you mean the whole token tax Of course, of course. Um, but I do want to say this, and that's what I wanted to address. Um, because Jody had asked.
ask you a question in the back about um, taxes and the money that's coming out that you're taking out of your Hope Token accounts and just this whole crypto area because it's, it is so new to the IRS. If you notice on tax forms this year, they ask the question, um, do you, did you buy or sell any crypto? And then that's where they left it, right? They just were being nosy. Now, certain companies, I won't say any names, for the first time ever this year have started reporting crypto buy, crypto buy and sells. You were getting 1099Bs for it, if you noticed. I won't say the name of the companies, but if you got the form, you know you got hit in the head. Because what the IRS did this year is they treated it like capital gains. So it was like you bought a house every other day and you got taxed on it. People were just getting slammed. So what my advice to my clients were, please, the caveat when I talk is always simply this. I don't know y'all. I don't know your personal tax situation. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at your returns. I don't know your finances. So without that, this is a, these are broad-based statements based on clients that I have and that I know. I don't go back to your tax professional and just say, hey, this lady said, does this, how does this apply to me, okay? Um, so what, <laughs> what I suggested was for them to take their money. It, what gets taxed, basically? is anything beyond what you put in that you take out. So if you put $10,000 in and you take 11,000 out, that $1,000 is what's going to be taxed. You got what I'm saying? So anything beyond what you put in, what, what you already had, up to a year. So leave it in there for a year and you're fine right now. But there are some new laws that are coming to, um, coming through Congress that are gonna shift and change all that. So you kind of just have to pay attention and keep an eye on it because it's always changing. It's always changing. They have taken what used to be a four month situation in terms of tax work and made it a full year for us. So. I know it's really important to talk to you. I know you're out of time. So many, because sometimes finding crypto.com uh, or some of these other places it's hard to buy because they only take certain ways to find it and this and that. So a lot of us have people sell us some money and they're really buying coins and then we transfer the coins to MetaMask to them. What are, are we going to have a tax liability for all of them? Are we going to be able to balance them out by showing the seven to six people? I'm going to give you the same on. answer I gave Jody. If you tell. Because right now, they don't have a way of knowing. It won't be that way always, because the IRS has hired about 400 agents to want to figure out the whole crypto problem. They are hiring companies to go and figure out this whole wallet scenario. So like if you've got a crypto wallet number and they, it's not attached to your social, they're trying to figure out whose money is whose. They're literally hiring and paying people and companies to figure it out. Right now, they don't know. Um, I will say that I do have some stateside holdings, but I also have some that you have to have a VPN to get to. Hello. What? Hello. 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 Okay. All right. I, yes. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.